Well, good afternoon, everybody, and good morning to folks on the West Coast. Uh, just want to thank everyone for having me here today. So today we're going to talk about best practices for automating and accelerating invoice to cash. Um, so I'd like to start off by telling a story. Now, I imagine that everyone is at least passingly familiar with the decline of Blockbuster and the rise of Netflix and how the two happen nearly in parallel. What you might not realize is that Blockbuster actually had the opportunity to purchase Netflix. Not once, not twice, but actually several times. Now, this lack of action has been laid at the feet of Blockbuster CEO, who by all accounts was an excellent manager, but lacked in strategic vision. Netflix, on the other hand, realized that they needed to innovate because they too were having severe challenges. Now, I've been a Netflix customer for the better part of a decade. I remember when my wife and I were first debating about which level of membership we were going to get, and we decided to go all the way in and get their best tier, which allows us to have a whole three DVDs at a time. So, you know, it, we're all excited. We settle in on a Friday night, you know, getting ready for our weekend, watching TV, and by Saturday morning, we realized we've already watched everything and exhausted our entire plans for the weekend. Now, we had to package up our DVDs, mail them out, wait for the return, and we wouldn't have any new DVDs until Tuesday at the earliest. At the time, you know, we thought that maybe we shouldn't give up on Blockbuster just yet because the Netflix product was pretty limited. You know, and we're like, why would Netflix restrict even their best clients so much? Well, it's because Netflix had limitations. Even with those types of restrictions in place, Netflix was still processing 190,000 DVDs a day. They expected their employees to process 1,000 DVDs per hour. It was so bad that Netflix mandated mandatory exercise breaks in an attempt to reduce carpal tunnel syndrome. Clearly, this was neither a sustainable nor scalable solution. So as you can imagine, Netflix struggled with growth and a plateauing stock price. So in much the same way, we see the same thing in AR with invoice to cash. It's a very manual and cumbersome process. The customer is not pleased with the service, and it can't scale with organizations' desires. So let's get back to Netflix for a few more minutes. So what did they do to address those pain points? Well, by innovating and leveraging new technology, they launched their streaming programming. This allowed them to transform and scale their business in a huge way. But what I don't think Netflix really gets enough credit for is what was the impetus for the direction of their innovation? They expanded based on their customers' desires, which is an important key to their success. You know, for example, now my wife and I didn't have to hedge our bets with other potential services and providers like Blockbuster. Now, some people on the webinar might balk at what I'm going to say, but I, I think it's really important to consider. The pulse of your business isn't about your products or service. It's really about your client's reaction to those products and services that drives cash flow. What you want is cash flow to invest and expand and innovate to meet your customer's need and predictability to grow the business, manage your expenses, and you know, reduce DSO. And your customers are at the same time are looking for a smooth user experience, but one that's on their terms. And these two highly dependent aspects of your business, customers and cash, are absolutely critical to your success. And so when you think about that, how you interact matters. Every time you interact with your customer, it's an opportunity to show them that you value them and their business, and it drives the ability to seamlessly send cash back into your business. Conversely, a bad interaction, whether it's an incorrect invoice, a late payment, a misapplied payment, impacts not just your customer and your ARAP teams, but also your sales team, customer support teams, and sometimes even marketing and IT teams, and we'll touch on that in a minute. And, and that ripple effect can be costly. World-class organizations understand this. They really, really do. And what they do is they look for transparency and visibility into their operational processes, especially their financial ones, and to ensure both customers and cash are in good health. So how did we get to this incredibly complex place of invoice to cash? Well, if we look back 30 to 40 years ago, the invoice to cash process was really simple. Paper invoices went out, paper checks came in. Simple but it was a very long and manual process. You fast forward 10 years to the 1980s, EDI, Electronic Data Interchange, 
came along. So now electronic media is in the mix. Invoices and other business information can be transferred pretty much instantly. If we fast forward again and beginning with the 1990s, internet and email invoices can now be delivered. Websites, websites they allow access to account information and invoices on demand. Businesses are now taking payments online with credit cards and ACH. So technology created a faster way for customers to manage their accounts and their money. However, on the other hand, multi-channel options are creating layers of real complexity and chaos for the businesses that are trying to serve them. And don't forget, all this time, we're still serving and supporting customers who prefer paper invoices and checks. Now, good organizations know they have these challenges, but understanding exactly where they are can be extremely difficult. We had worked with one client uh, who knew they had a problem, but again, they didn't know exactly where the, their issues lay. So to get to the bottom of the issue, it was necessary to pull apart all the layers, and we saw just incredible complexity, multiple vendors, disparate systems that are trying to manage all these different channels and all the different parts of the process. So this meant that their various point solutions were not integrated, not easily sharing data, and not providing visibility to themselves or their customers. And it also meant that there were multiple points of potential failure to the system. This placed multiple stressors on their entire team, and this is what we really need to unravel. So I had mentioned earlier that it impacts the entire team, and because many times the invoice to cash process is seen as an AR only issue. But the challenges associated with the AR spread across the entire enterprise. Let me start with customer service. Think about this. How much time does that team take explaining invoices and the time and resources spent creating duplicates for missing invoices? And then there's also the unhappy clients whose services have been restricted due to non-payment on the invoices, well, that they claim they never received. And if we look at sales, if your organization is seen as difficult to do business with, your clients are going to look um, to your competitors for better options. Really, this is not so different than when my wife and I were hedging our bets against Netflix. Negative customer experiences in turn impacts the marketing team, right? Because they're working hard to build brand and expand market position, and that's not often considered. But what you do have to consider is that invoicing is one of the most frequent and impactful channels of communication with customers. If this isn't a positive and easy experience, now marketing has to work that much harder just to build up the brand's reputation. And the team that I think is really silent and invisible but suffers a great burden is the IT team. They have to support the entire invoice to cash process because they drive the ability to automate the process, reduce the manual tasks, and offer touchless processes to the customer. So the entire business is affected by the efficiency and convenience of the invoice to cash process. So, you know, often when we talk to IT, they speak of the challenges of being forced to build ad hoc queries, dashboarding, reporting, SQL scripts, and this doesn't even take into account the maintenance of the internal infrastructure to support the disparate systems. This can take up so much time that the IT team can't focus on their core competencies, and thus, as a result, the rest of the organization suffers because IT has a greatly reduced bandwidth. So what are we seeing in the whole world as it relates to this? Well, looking strategically, 79% of organizations see their current invoice to cash process as a real challenge. And they're moving away from paper and trying to move to automation in an effort to reduce DSO and thus in turn increase cash flow. Tactically, well, we're seeing that one of the biggest drivers is actually IP automation, funny enough. Many organizations move to a more automated AP process, but what this has done is it shifted the burden to the AR team who are being asked to do more. So what are some of the more specific challenges that we're seeing? Well, we had mentioned the, dis the disparate systems. What are we specifically seeing with that? Well, no visibility, no tracking, uh, there's a huge lack of data integration, um, there's multiple invoice preferences from the buyers. Um, the, the manual labor and high cost of print for invoicing and just trying to manage short pays and reconciliation for that. And then that's not even to mention the growing security risks and regulatory compliance mandates that can complicate the process. And then again, going back to the disparate systems, if they're not all equally up to date, well, 
your headache to manage it all becomes that much more painful. So that's why what we're seeing is that world-class organizations, they invest in processes and automation that help their people run the connection between their business, the customer, and their cash flow most effectively. In fact, the Hackett Group reports that organizations that are leveraging tech and automation for process management, they spend 40% less on operations. And what if you zeroed in on your AP processes or customer invoicing process, for example? Well, research shows that organizations who focus on optimizing their invoice to cash process, for example, spend 85% less. We, had, we spoke with one particular organization, HD Supply. They're actually one of the largest maintenance suppliers in the country. Um, they had implemented rules-based matching and electronic adoption, for example, and they also had um, done some work with self-service portals. And just by doing those three things, they saw a 70% reduction. Now, these organizations that drive to the higher standards, they see not only those savings benefits, but they also see an increase of 26% in their cash flow over their peers. Now, keep in mind, that 26% over their peers, that, those aren't figures against laggards. These are against peers who are utilizing what is probably considered standard methodology. So that is a very significant increase. Now, when we look at the key to accelerating cash flow, the real key to driving that cash flow is quicker payments. And to be more specific, quicker electronic payment. If we had a utopian you know, invoice to cash process, you would have something that was completely automated, accurate, and touchless. And while electronic invoicing is easy and it is on the rise, delivering an invoice quickly does not mean that it's getting paid right away. What happens is the customer gets bogged down in the process. When they have to print an invoice and then mail a check and then walk it down the hall and then key in the payment, when they have to do this all the time, it just slows everything way down. But you know, with electronic payments that are streamlined and can be integrated with a cash app solution, then you're actually taking significant time. And you know, many times, this is literally weeks and sometimes even months out of waiting for payment. However, it's not just that simple. This can prove challenging for organizations, especially ones that run on thin margins. Credit card fees can be high, and credit card transactions also pose a security risk. So, and you know, there have been numerous examples in the past, and I'm, but I'm sure that everyone is aware of the relatively recent issues that even big brands like Target and Sony have had. So, without an integration and automated cash app solution, there's still very manual, time-consuming, and risky behavior. Compounding this, when the electronic payment come in, they're usually decoupled from remittance, and this adds time, cost, and manual labor. And that isn't even considering the additional cost of maintaining PCI compliance, which can be incredibly daunting. So let's talk a little bit about the best practices since we kind of now have a good idea of the challenges in the landscape. The first area is payment segment management is the invoice delivery. There are ways to examine best practice for both print and mail delivery and electronic delivery. Even with the shift towards electronic invoicing, traditional print and mail services can't be entirely cast aside. The truth is not all businesses are comfortable with adopting an electronic solution and they still rely on paper invoicing to conduct their business. So although print is very manual, there are ways to digitize your process through a variety of best practices and technologies. So both print and electronic and voice delivery, it can be seamless, efficient, flexible, and transparent. And most importantly, it can be, uh, you can leverage the data that you already have in your ERP system. And you know, really, this is where the largest impact can be made. If you have a seamless transition between your infra system and your invoice to cash solution, where you're able to integrate invoice delivery and payments directly to Infor, this leads to a more efficient, automated, and accelerated invoice to cash process. Because by having your electronic invoice delivery solution pulled from your ERP, it's then very, very easy to reconcile payment information later when your customers pay electronically. Basically, you essentially create your own closed loop environment. Now, the invoice delivery process 
with no surprise to anybody, starts with the invoice itself. So no matter your delivery method, whether it's print or electronic, you can still include sophisticated formatting and tracking. You know, in the past, invoices were relatively standard. They afforded minimal customization and tracking capabilities. But fortunately, invoices have evolved. They can now be fully customized and dynamic and easy to track. A lot of companies today actually have multiple branches or subsidiaries, each with their own logo and branding, and you should have the ability to create different invoices, formats, and such for each of those logos in your invoice delivery solution. It really should be intelligent enough to automatically send that correct information to the right customer. And in speaking with some info folks, this can be a real challenge when trying to work through the ERP system. More to that, um, when you rely on the traditional tracking with the USPS or UPS or FedEx, it, it's really just not enough. Best practices in, includes adding dual park barcoding technology to each and every invoice you send out because that will virtually eliminate the risk of invoicing errors or, or missing pages. Thus, you know, with that, invoices can be read through a scanning system that ensures the right customer is receiving the right invoices. And more to this, Often neglected is a smaller of the invoice that should be dedicated to messaging. Now, it can be used to promote a new product or let customers know that they receive this invoice electronically through your online portal. Most importantly, the messages should be easy to swap out and change as often as needed. Now, if you require customer signatures as part of the invoicing process, it's also really smart to always include a copy of their signature in the final invoice because this reminds the customer that they've already signed off on the goods or services that you're invoicing them for. When you rely on traditional tracking to track invoices, one of the challenges you'll see is that you're only able to track the invoice using a really long, complex number string, right? The tracking number. You won't be able to track that invoice by searching for your customer by name or by account number. So you should use and add a separate barcode that identifies the invoice based on key identifiers like account number and customer name. There are some other strategies that you can incorporate to make your print and mail delivery process even more efficient. So let's, uh, let's imagine a scenario where a frequent customer of yours places consecutive orders within a given week. The first order only amounts to $15. If you know they're going to be placing more orders, it really doesn't make much sense to occur a $1.50 charge uh, on every single mailing when you can wait to combine the invoices into a single envelope and then send them all at once. This is something that we call bullpenning. Now, when using this strategy, it's important that you have the ability to completely control the process. You know, at a certain point, a higher invoice dollar amount will certainly outweigh the nominal postage fee. So it's smarter to send that invoice immediately so you get paid faster. Using smart bullpenning standards and technology will allow you to set, you know, parameters for dollar threshold, a maximum number of whole days, so you're not waiting too long for the customer reorder to hit that threshold. And even specific accounts to exclude from the bullpenning process, uh, you know, maybe entirely in case they need their invoices sent immediately. So, you know, at this point, nearly everyone recognizes the advantage of taking the inefficiencies of paper out of the process, which include DSO reduction, accelerated cash collection, and additional lower costs and higher efficiency. So, what is standing in the way? Well. Technology certainly isn't an issue. You know, for years, software solutions have enabled uh, companies to send 100% of their AR invoices and billing documents electronically. More recently, the same capabilities are available through software as a service and infrastructure as a service models. You know, what it is is more than anything, the barrier to automated AR invoicing is a contact management issue. Companies need a practical way to resolve varying customer and supplier uh, preferences for receiving these documents. So AR invoice automation can enable companies to easily satisfy changing preferences and tailor invoice delivery to the circumstances of each of your customers. It can also empower your customers to control their own methods and frequency of communication. So as they become ready to adopt e-invoicing, customers can log on to a secure site to choose paperless electronic delivery and designate the appropriate recipients for documents and filling in the preference delivery preferences. Now invoice delivery should focus on multi-channel approach that's flexible, it's transparent and seamless for when your paper customers are then ready to jump and make that transition, you know, to the 1990s from print to electronic delivery. Now, when we factor in all that goes into the B2B payment, 
reports are showing that 80% of businesses still have a manual process tucked away with their payment management methods. So if you're thinking, oh man, I, I do some of this, don't worry, you're not alone. Probably most of the people on this webinar have some form of manual process in their system today. Now, more businesses are fortunately overcoming concerns of transferring over to the ACH network. Um, they're also beginning to realize that digital payments provide the same level and quality of data as they would have with paper checks sitting right in front of them. With an ACH, remittance detail will also be transmitted, which it was a historical barrier to adopting ACH, and it no longer obviously is. So the added benefits of security, lower fees on payments, and a reduction in the number of outstanding payments or checks are three more reasons why ACH seems to finally be catching up after several decades. So a um, little bit earlier, uh, we had discussed the challenges that were placed on different areas of the organization, and, and I mentioned that PCI can hit particularly hard. PCI compliance is, is a really cumbersome internal process for most organizations, and there's an increasing trend to outsource this, and that's actually a really smart move for a lot of organizations. Because by outsourcing, it gives organizations the ability to reduce your, PS, uh, I'm sorry, your PCI compliance scope. Because there's about an average annual cost of a quarter of a million dollars for large merchants um, for a PCI audit. And it's really resource intensive process and it, it really doesn't have that many rewards. Um, the scope of the audit is it's intrusive and requires an external auditor if you're a level one merchant. And even if you're not, you're level two, three, or four, you still need dedicated internal resources to spend months analyzing and evaluating you know, an environment and internal processes to determine compliance, and that's without the guarantee of ongoing security. Now, PCI standards present technical and operational requirements uh, for protecting cardhold data as well. These standards apply to any organization that stores, processes, or transmits cardholder data. So by outsourcing to a PCI level one compliant organization, it gives you the ability to reduce your PCI compliance scope. That includes the reduction in the aforementioned quarter of a million dollars, and when directing customers to you know, a hosted payment channel and removing stored credit card data from your own payment environment, you now effectively render four of the 12 PCI compliance um, obsolete. And that's a huge boon to most organizations. Now, something that's often ignored is giving the customers the ability to manage and control how where and when they pay. Again, going back to the Netflix example, innovating to meet the needs of the client. And cloud-based payment portals, they give your customers the ability to manage and streamline the invoice approval process, which in turn helps get your business paid faster. You know, functionality such as auto pay can help reduce delinquent payments. And payment portals can give you insight into short pay discrepancies. So if your customer is short or overpaying you for any reason, they should be prompted to explain the discrepancy so you're always in the know with 100% visibility into all payment activity. Now, as much as most organizations will strive for it, unfortunately, we will not achieve 100% electronic adoption in the foreseeable future. Um, so what are some of the challenges and best practices to deal with decoupled remittance statements that still come in the mail? Well, when we talk specific to the cash application process, there are many, many challenges that a business faces. You know, you've got processing multiple forms of payment, and that's complex and expensive. It requires manual labor, paying for keystrokes from a lockbox, managing exceptions, and dealing with workflow issues. You know, customers are paying via more methods. Um, you know, and like I said, despite the proclamations that paper is dead, it's not the case. We're still straddled with paper checks. Electronic payments are growing where remittance data is coming separate from payment, as we mentioned. Um, this is a major pain point to manage. Now, while most of us here are completely invested with Infor, some companies are growing through acquisition and mergers and ending up with multiple ERP and divisions, and this creates challenges for posting cash. Again, we were talking about those disparate systems. So 
in today's world of automation technology, the world is seemingly taken over by robots. You know, from IBM's Watson to self-driving cars to artificial intelligence and now robotics. Now, before we welcome our new robotic overlords, we need to ask what strikes the right balance between just enough automation and what's too much. So often, you'll hear people refer to AI and robotic process automation. What's not talked about is the fact that it's unsupervised. Custom rules are often needed to actually teach the AI software how to think and make decisions for you. Although they continue to evolve, AR and RPA still lack the critical ability to recognize data with guaranteed 100% activity. The process only works well with repeatable decisions that have clear definitions. But you know, even in today's world of automation, your customers don't always pay the exact same way each time. And that involves still a lot of guesswork. So you need a way to blend the automation, but, uh, but also with the ability to give users transparency and control to make the decisions that they need to. So a best practice is to use a hybrid model that utilizes a combination of automation and guided modeling to give you close to 100% matching. Supervised machine learning is sort of like a self-driving car. You'll always need guidance from the person in the driver's seat, even though I might say it's fully automated. The hybrid solution removes any guesswork and errors from your cash out process, and in addition to helping you reduce the amount of manual work and disparate processes that are historically associated with cash out. So a hybrid model is that accuracy to guided modeling with the automation, giving you more configurable, secure approach to applying payments. Cash applications should also be a smart solution, so it learns how to, excuse me, how to intelligently read each customer's remittance statements, and then applies payments automatically. Another best practice is that anyone on your team should be able to log in 24-7, 365 from anywhere on the globe, and teach the system how to handle exceptions. A cash app process should also always be configurable and never outsourced to third parties. Finally, ensure your data is secure, organized, and searchable so that you remain in control every single step of the way. Finally, I want to touch on the, the environment. Customer service, for example, is paramount to success in the B2B space. Uh, in a study done by Zendesk, they found that 62% of B2B customers purchased more after a good customer service experience. So these kind of great customer experiences rely on a 360 degree view of your customer relationships, again, going back to that theme. And what this speaks to is the need for a full culture buy-in to ensure success. Now, I had mentioned a few conversations that we had spoken with and that saw success and who implemented some of these best practices with, with great success. And they're far from alone. So I just wanted to show a handful of info organizations um, that have taken the time to implement best practices and processes and have seen success with it. And finally, I just wanted to leave here with one last example and a quote. Um, on the benefits of implementing, you know, best of breed invoice to cash best practices. And with that, if uh, Gary, if we have any questions, I'm happy to speak uh, to them. Okay, hang tight. Um, first of all, if anybody uh, wants to participate, you can. And I'll I'll be looking for that. I don't see any questions right now, Tom. I'll just give it a minute here and see if anybody uh, weighs in with anything. So, okay, great. Tom, how many, do you have any idea of how many um, customer, in for customers Build Trust has right now? I don't know the number off the top of my head, but it is a significant portion of the uh, customer base that we do have. Uh, yeah, and I would agree. I, you know, in my last conversation with Tom Scott, he he indicated that, um, uh, you know, it's easily over a hundred. So. Oh, it it is well over a hundred, um, for sure. Okay. Tom, I'm not seeing any questions coming in, so I guess we can wrap it up. 
All right. Well, I thank everybody for joining us today. Uh, Gary, thanks for having us, and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll see you soon. Okay, absolutely. Everybody have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.